Hi everyone, it's Laura from Green & Company and today I'm here with the second video for the October Creative Maker Box. So for this one we'll be working on our witch's broom. So in front of you you'll need your uh, four broom pieces plus the three sign pieces. Uh, you'll need your uh, quarter inch brush, um, your half inch brush will work. Um, I don't think you'll need your makeup wedges. I have mine there just in case, but you'll need your sandpaper. Oh, and you'll need your fine tip brush. I don't have mine here right now, so I'm going to use my really fine ones. And these ones are actually really nice to use. So I'll show you what they are after if you're looking for some fine tip brushes. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to get started on getting this done. So um, let's begin by staining this piece. And you know what? Now that I look at my pile of stuff, I don't think I brought my stain home. So hmm, that could be an issue. So we're just going to pretend that this is stained. And for those of you, uh, hmm, that is silly of me. Okay. So in your Creative Maker Box, you're going to have a little mini pot of stain because all you are is staining this part and you can stain this part just to hide the back. So that is all you're doing. So just take, you can take your little brush in there and just kind of brush it on, which you'll see um, why I'm suggesting that for what we're doing here on the next part. Um, and you can do the same thing on the back. So I apologize guys. I thought I grabbed it from the store, but apparently I did not. So I'll skip ahead on that part. Um, so then let's do the bottom of the broom pieces. So that will be your black, which you use for your sign, um, the round part of the sign. So you'll have some left over and you won't need very much. So if you've got a little container or your little tray here, um, just put a little tiny bit uh, on your tray and then grab some water. So I'm going to use my half inch brush and I'm just gonna get it really wet. And I'm just gonna come in here and pull some of the paint. So I'm kind of making like a wash or a stain. Um, and so we'll see how I'm gonna start here on um, my back piece. Now this piece here facing the same way as this will be covered. So um, I'm just going to practice on this one for you guys and you can too if you want to test the strength of your black um, but I will do the back just so it hides all of this when it's standing. So I'm just going to come in here and you're not even going to wipe this off. You're just going to go in here yeah, I'm fine with that. So I'm just going to let, let's see, I'm just going to wipe it on. So, so if I was doing this, I can see it's starting to lighten as I probably run out of some paint in my brush. So you could always come back and do two coats, but I'm just going to flip this over and just draw a little bit more paint into my water and come back here and start. Now, I would go up and down, but my grain is going side to side. So that's why I'm going sideways. If your grain is going up and down, then, then paint that way. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with what a grain is, those will be the lines in the wood. So these lines for me are going side to side and each piece could be different, but depending on how I cut in the machine, it, they're most likely most of them will be side to side. So as this dries, that will um, lighten up. So that piece is done. And then I'm gonna move on to the next one. So I see I'm running out of water here. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more and I'm gonna pull some more paint. And don't worry if every one is a little different. This is a broom, right? So you're gonna get different shades of color. And so don't worry about that. So I'm gonna come in here and we're layering a lot of these pieces. So you're not gonna get a full view of every layer. You just don't want to paint it. You wanna kind of create a wash or a stain with the paint. And then just let that dry. So you don't have to worry about the back of this one because this piece will 
be for that, okay? And then this one. dark for me so I'm just going to dilute it just a little bit and don't worry if you get puddles of water on there I mean it'll dry and this is just going to take a longer to dry than is if you were doing it with paint on its own but we've added the extra water so of course that will take a little longer to dry so I'm just going to set those pieces off to the side oops I missed a tiny spot there so I'm just going to Okay, so these pieces off to the side. All right, and the same thing for um, the sign. So sometimes there's a little charring because of the engraving. So um, you can come in here and kind of just sand that away um, just so it will cover a little bit more even. You just get all that dust out of the letters there. Okay, so I'm going to start. So once again, you'll have little pot, mini pots for these because really you need like a drop. So you can pour a little drop out or, you know, if you don't feel like you're going to use those little pots after, you can just put some water in there, but you'll find it's just easier to just pour a little bit out onto your tray or a paper plate. So once again, I'm just going to get my little quarter inch brush with some water on it. And I'm just going to come in here and pull some paint. And you can see, I really should make sure you guys can see that. Okay. So, and you can see that it's diluted and then just come in here and paint. And don't worry about the grooves. We are gonna do something else with that. So really because it's just watered down, it really doesn't affect too much of that engraving. So I'm not really worried, but you don't want it too diluted that you don't get any color, especially on the yellow. But So you don't have to even worry about wiping the edges because you're pretty much just painting on that and then that's gonna dry. So I'm just gonna rinse out my brush. And do the same with the other two. So it might look like a complicated project, but it really is not. I mean, for some of you, it might be more the highlighting we're going to do on the broom after. But you know what? I've never done it before either. So that was my first time playing with a technique like that. So it really is not super difficult. Okay, so now on to this one. My grain is going up and down on this, but I'm just kind of applying it side to side and then I can come back in and wipe it up and down. It's just easier on these pieces uh, to do it that way. Okay, and then come back in there. So, so you don't want it too diluted because remember when it starts to dry, it will lighten. So you still want to be able to make sure that that wood looks uh, a little colored and then after we're going to come in with some black glaze so that's what's going to help deepen um, the edges and kind of make it look spookier I guess but I mean if you don't want to do that after that's totally up to you if you like it with the nice brighter tones on the on the little signs you can leave them as is but I'll go through that after with you guys so just wash out your brush again wipe it off 
and then do a little drop of green. And same thing, grab some water and pull some paint. So now, you know, when you're painting your kits and stuff, if you kind of like the look of this, you can use it, you know, on other projects. You don't always just have to use it for this. Um, if you like like a stained look with a color, this is what you can do on some of yours. So that is done. Okay, so I'm gonna let those dry. So now, since most of this stuff's gonna take a little bit of time, so you can see as it's lightening, this or drying, it's starting to lighten. So you can see that this is still wet. This part is drier. This part is really much drier. So you can see how much lighter that is. So yeah, so just based on that, um, if you find one that starts to lighten, if it's too light, then you can easily, you know, give it a sand and go back with the second coat if you want a little bit more um, darkness to your base. But um, remember, we're going to do some colored highlights. We're going to do use green and orange and white um, to kind of bring that out. So you want to be able to be able to see, you know, some of those tones over the black. But I'm just going to give these probably... I don't know, it's pretty warm in here today. Um, I don't know, 10 minutes. And then I will come back and uh, do the rest with you. Okay, we'll see you soon, guys. Okay, guys, I'm back. So my pieces are dry, and that is probably like, I don't know, 15 minutes. I kind of got busy doing something. So uh, what we're going to do is just give them a light sand. Um, especially now that they have it a bit more water based uh, products on them you can tell that they're very rough so just uh, gently do a sand on them if you want the edges distressed a little bit now would be a good time to do that Just watch when you're sanding that there you don't um, go too vigorous because there's not a whole lot of color um, on these pieces since we did them as a wash. you're going to take these three pieces so this piece we don't need anymore that back piece it's more for helping it stand um, and so when we're layering this it's this one uh, this one here and this one so that's how you'll get that layered effect but we need to apply the colored swiped um, those swooshes of color throughout on each layer before we go and stack them. So um, we'll just leave those there for now. So what you're gonna wanna do now, um, if you are one who's got some really good brush, not really good brushes, but you know, um, a little finer brushes, then I would suggest using those because this will give you nice, delicate, lines not that the other one of ours won't work but it um it might start to um become not so defined as we go from you know color to color so if you've got something really fine tip like this um then i would suggest um using those um now i got these ones at michael's and it's the artist loft these are um the brown synthetic brushes for watercolor and um, they're in 
different sizes. So 10, 5, 3, and 0. Um, so I'm just going to use one of them. I don't know which size I have. I'm using number three right now, and I think the one that I originally used that's at the store right now is the zero. So, um, but either way, they're just nice and fine and delicate tips. So that way you have a bit more control um, when you're doing those. So um, I did not design this file. So this designer was um, gracious enough when she's creating these that she's got some score lines in there so we can definitely use those as our guide as we start to apply um, our colors. So you always want to start with the darkest color first and then work your way to the lightest ones. So I'm going to start with a little bit of green and now I'm just going to play with it on this one because I'm going to cover this one up anyway. So um, just give it the fine tip and I'm just going to like give it a dot and then give it a swoosh mark here. So not too, you know, um, heavy. You're just kind of doing, you know, very light, wispy motions, definitely in the direction that you notice, you know, the brush, um, is going now the green isn't going to be as noticeable as like your orange and your white but it'll give you some some shadowish kind of effect so um, i know she liked to do a dot and then a line so i was kind of playing with that when i was doing it but um so yeah so i'm just going all over right now i'm not even following what this is but um and if you feel like, you know, you need a little, oh, I should have brought my water back, um, water in it, um, I guess you can do that too. But, um, so, I'll just get started. By no means am I an expert on this type of painting. This is sometimes a bit too detailed for me, but, I mean, it doesn't hurt for me to try some new stuff too, so that's why I like to do this. All right, so I'm just going to start, see, I don't have my sample here, so I don't even remember what I was, how I did it. So... Um, so I'm just going to get started here. So I'm just going to follow her lines and I'm not going to necessarily go right on them, but I'm just going to go like kind of beside them. Now it might be harder for you to see the green. Oops, I don't have that much of my brush. So... Now, some of this isn't even, like, you could practice more up at the top if you want, but as soon as you start to, like, layer this, like, you're not even seeing half of these strokes up at the top. So you really could just focus more on the bottom because that's where you're going to be layering these. I mean, really, there's no wrong way to do this. I mean, I was watching, she did a video on this so I could, I could learn from her too. And I mean, mine wasn't anywhere near what hers was. So, um, so that way, you know, but I loved what I did at the end. So that's cool. So as I'm layering this on here, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I could probably put, you know, something here and so forth so once i start to get to the other color it's going to make it a little easier to see but yeah you can constantly take this and you can kind of see where the colors are coming in and just do some wispy lines um And so forth so even when this one goes on here it's going to cover up even more so you know what half of your strokes that you do you probably won't even see so don't feel like you have to be very um precise like i'm having a hard time seeing the green ones right now so um so just you know just play especially on the back piece so i'm just going to go get my water because i cleaned it out and forgot to bring it back but so then i can rinse my brush and start to do a color that you can see a bit more okay so I might even just put that one down and let's see. 
I might use the five and I'll leave the smaller one for the white because I don't want my, and I'm going to go back and do, oh, that was really dumb of me. I still needed green. So I'm going to come in with my other one and I'm going to keep doing my green. So you're going to go do the front, the middle and the back um, before you change colors and uh, just keep doing those wispy lines and you can follow follow her score marks and if you kind of practice up at the top more even though you're not going to see these ones you can kind of get a feel for the stroke but i'm sure there's some of you who are way better at this than i am if you've had that kind of you know toll painting or whatever but you know what, for me, this is kind of fun. So you just kind of have to play to learn. And you might find you like this or you might might not. But, you know, there might be some instances and in some kits that you like this kind of detail. And so now you've just learned something else. So as I layer this, so I'll grab this one. So I'm not seeing some of the colors. So I'm just gonna come in here and pull some strokes down here. So that way you can see a little bit of them as they are stacked. And you can always go back and add I'll leave that one. I know it's really hard for you guys to see this one. Now the top one is definitely the one you're going to want to focus on because you won't, you will see this one the most. So and really it's just to help to give this broom some movement. I'm just giving some of them a dot and then doing a swoosh. And by no means are my swooshes perfect. All right, so for now I think that's fine and I'm just gonna clean my brush. I can always come back and add a little bit more after. But that's why you start with the darker ones first and work your way into the lighter. So the next one I did was orange. And so I'm just going to take a little bit. And if you want to, once again, we'll put those off to the side. You can practice on your back one here, not the one that's going to show. Remember, the one that's going to be hidden when you stack it. So you can kind of just, you know, dot and then swoosh. A little dot. And, you know, just kind of play with your brush if you need to figure out how, how it moves when you put the paint on. Um, so we're going to come in here and do some again. So just follow those score lines. See, now you can start to see the color up on here. See, I find that I don't get enough. There we go. Just got to get enough movement in my hand that I can kind of not necessarily, I don't know, pull the brush, but almost use my arm. But I guess you find out what works best for you. I, like I said, I'm not experienced in this kind of detailed painting, but I just go with it. So I'm not necessarily going right over the existing one. I'm going either on the other side or kind of beside it. So that way you can get some depth as you have each color um, line up beside each other. And like I said, some of these colors up at the top you won't see, so grab your next piece and layer it. So now you can start to see where you need to bring in some more of that color. So, If you just 
just have to do some of the ends here. To this one and, and even though I won't see this it gives you a chance to kind of practice Oops. and if you went over an existing stroke you know not a big deal just doesn't matter if you're, some strokes are heavy and some are dark. It just kind of gives that movement of color as you layer them. So I hope you guys can really see what I'm doing here. As long as your strokes are going in the direction in which the broom moves, then you'll find that anything you do really will be just Fine. I'm going to do just a little bit up here. Okay, so that one, see I can pull some more in from this side here. Okay, and so I'm just going to this beside so you can see now how it starts to give it some movement as you get all those colors layered on As I think you get going, you get a bit more confident in your swooshing ability, I suppose. But so now I am kind of, you can kind of see how it's building up. And once you bring in the white, it's really going to make everything pop. But you definitely want to get those other colors in first. And I mean, if you had to, you can always come back and layer some. Now, I didn't pull the yellow, the butternut in there because I didn't want too many lighter too many colors because the white I felt just really brought all the rest out but you can totally if you want some butternut in there throw that in there if you want some wisps of black throw that in there um, that is totally fine it's your broom and I think whatever you do with it in that regards it will look great so um, so now I'm going to throw in some white All right, once again, if you want, you can practice with your back piece here just to kind of, now these are definitely more bold when you start to do the white because it's white and you can see those strokes. So you can kind of see, you know, what it's gonna look like when you start playing with it. So just practice on there if you want. Okay, so, now up here, I haven't really done anything up on this one, so I'm gonna just do a little bit of detail 
on this one. Once I do that, I've got some color up there. So, all right, here goes. Just my swooshes on here. just brings out that color. Now it might look like I have a lot, but remember once I start layering that, you're not really seeing a whole lot, especially if I start to layer this one, it really starts to hide that white. So don't feel like you've done too much. It's more the bottom part here and you can always come back and add those wisps after but all right so this one is next so let's see what it's doing to that spot okay it's hiding that spot okay so let's put that in here add For me, I find that if I'm not so much taking, moving the brush when I'm doing this, is that I'm pulling my wrist, and, and maybe I can, I feel I can get, I can get a smoother stroke than if I just take my brush. Like if I take my brush, I feel like sometimes it gets caught, but if I take my wrist and I pull it where I want, I find the stroke is a little bit smoother, but. Maybe it's just my table, I'm not sure, but um, I can get a nice, a lot nicer movement in my stroke. So might be something to try if you're finding it's not moving like you want. Let's layer this one. Okay, so let's put this one over top. Okay, so see that funny dot there? I'm like, oh, it's not in, people are gonna see that and it looks weird, but remember, you can hide it because that's what it does. So as you get into here, I'm just gonna lift this up a second. You can start seeing where you wanna add a little bit more stronger color or So I'm just gonna leave that one for a second and this one I'm just gonna leave for a second and then I'm gonna work on this one. Okay. Yeah, I feel like when I do that I can get a lot nicer flow because you know when I pull the brush myself it kind of wants to not run out of paint but I don't get that nice even stroke well it's not even even it's just it moves a lot better so just kind of pull that arm on a, a, so maybe make sure that you've got a nice smooth surface if you um, and as I've been doing this for the last few minutes I'm finding that's what works for me so So let me 
add this back in here. Oops. And like that. So see, now that you've got that white on there, you can see how it just gives that nice movement. You kind of feel like, you know, your broom is actually moving back and forth. So just, I'm just going to face it this way and get, um, give me a moment to make sure I'm happy with that and make sure I don't feel like I need anything anywhere else. So I have to make sure that, you know, you want to kind of have it balanced. Like, I mean, if you look at it, it's like, oh, this side needs a little bit more white or, oh, there's nothing down here. Then, you know, that's what you just kind of look and see. And if you feel like you need to bring in one of your other colors, then, um, then do that too. I feel like I could use a little bit of orange on this side. Just going to add that in there. Pretty happy with it other than I forgot my stain but other than that I'm pretty good with that one so um, I know you could just sit there and play and play and play um, and it's kind of like dry brushing you could just keep adding and adding and adding so you just keep adding until you're happy and satisfied and um, it will look marvelous any way you do it okay so I'm just gonna set those off to the side right now and I'm going to work on these so i'm just going to give this a light sand because i want to take i don't want to lighten the color too much but i don't want any texture much okay so i'm just going to give my edges a little sanding so that way when i do the black glaze it will kind of deepen that a little bit more Okay, so if you like them this way, I gotta make sure which, oh, I think I need to go get my picture because I don't have it here. Um, if you like the colors this way, nice and not bright, but just not dulled out with some black, then go right ahead. You can leave it that way. There's no telling that you have to use the glaze. Now, um, I'm not gonna glue them on because I need to finish this at the store, but what you'll do is um, you're going to just take, oh, did I cut these in the wrong way? I think your guys' don't have the sticky adhesive. These ones were just cut as a mistake. So, um, so what you're gonna do is you're going to just kind of position them where you would like. Because if I cut them with adhesive, then you have all this extra sticky in the back, which you don't need. So um, if you got a set with the adhesive on the back, then you know just peel it off and stick it you'll just have some sticky here but i am absolutely certain that none of you do um and so you shift those wherever you want and then just kind of remember put a little bit of glue and then set it and leave it okay if you like it that way if you want to give it a little bit of uh darkness uh to it and and put a little bit of black into the um engraved areas then that's what i'm going to show you next all right so in your box you will have some glaze in a little tiny pot now you can mix it right in the pot because i didn't give you a whole lot and you don't need a whole lot i'm just going to pour mine on my tray because i don't really have any one of those here so really you just need that tiny little bit and then you're just gonna put so for that you're just really just need like a couple drops of black paint you want to have more glaze than paint because we're just trying to make it like a trance a little bit of a um, if we have more glaze than paint then we'll be able to wipe most of it off without it um, discoloring too much. Um, if you had more paint than uh, glaze, then you would have a harder time removing 
um, the paint color. The glaze is a medium that doesn't dry very quickly, so that's why it'll be, we can wipe most of the pigment from the paint off. So I just gave that a mix and you're gonna need your one inch, not one inch, sorry, your quarter inch brush and you're gonna need a baby wipe or a very lightly damped towel, uh, paper towel, and you're just going to take um, your glaze and you're just gonna swirl it into those letters. And don't worry about if it gets on the rest because that doesn't matter. We're just gonna wipe this extra stuff away anyways and it'll just kind of help discolor the green. So that's why you wanna sand it because as you go to wipe your your um, baby wiper cloth can get kind of snagged on there. So you can kind of wipe off the extra and it's gonna kind of give the green an age look, but you wanna not wipe too hard that you're pulling the black out of um, the lettering. Now the glaze might look shiny in its pot, but uh, when it dries, it's gonna be just as flat looking as it was um, this way. So it's just gonna help get that color to pop. Like this is just the engraved color. It's just the wood as it's being burned. But so if you're fine with that, that's fine. So see how that changed and it just kind of drew that black out, which then helps um, bring in the black from the broom and from the sign. But if you don't want to do that, that's that's okay. You can you can just leave it. So now this one will really, I'm gonna do one side so you can see how it changes. And I'm just gonna work it in there. And then I'm gonna wipe this away. So you can see how that changes there and then how it discolors the yellow. So if you're not loving that, then don't even, don't even try it. You can just leave it as is. Just make sure you wipe that black all over the yellow so it just kind of creates this aged, dirty, spooky sign look. And once it dries, you can sand it, but um, now we'll do this one again. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, apparently, I should have dumped my phone before I started my video. So I just finished wiping this back really uh, and then it died so um so yeah, as you can see now they've kind of um you know came really old looking so like i said if you don't like that um uh, then just leave it and um that's not a problem uh, i'm just gonna wash this out and clean up. okay so we'll let those dry because they're still a little damp from putting the glaze on so we can work on putting this together. So you don't want to sand this after because then you'll wear away your color. Um, so this part now you'll need, um, we can start to layer this. So before I start getting my glue out, cause you're going to need glue for this one and here. So, um, you can use wood glue. That's fine. This part, um, if you're doing it for here, just very little. So that way it doesn't seep out. Um, so when you're lining these up, before we get started with the glue, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're getting it exactly even because if this is off just a little bit, it will, it won't steady itself. Now, um, as you start to layer these ones, you'll definitely have to kind of check it before you really set that adhesive because you want to make sure that it stands well. So make sure you've got a surface that is flat and not leaning and stuff like that before you get going. Like I don't think my table here is the best one, but um, once you start layering these other ones on too, they'll study it. But as long as you've got these ones exactly lined up, that's a good start. So you'd want to make sure that nothing is sticking out one more than the other. You want to make sure they're exactly the same. Okay, so I'm going to go grab... that sentence I went to go grab my wood glue um, just because it's a bigger area so I'd rather use that than 
my uh, Gorilla Glue. So I'm just going to put um, some here. So as I was not paying attention, this part here, and you might need to go back and do that, should be black if you didn't catch that like I did, um, if you caught it. So you can go back and put a little bit of your stain stuff right here before you glue it. So if you forgot like me, just don't worry about if it doesn't dry before um, you put the back on because it'll be just fine there. So, okay, so then we can put that on so then it looks like it's finished. Okay, so grab a little glue. So just watch that you're not getting too close to the edge. It usually doesn't take a whole lot to get these to stick together. Okay, so with the glue, at least you can slide it around for a moment. Give it a squish there and then really make sure all of those are lined up really nicely. Use your finger and make sure everything feels the same. Because one little part protruding more than the other can make this fall over. So once you've got it all nicely lined up with the glue, then just give it a moment to set. So, yeah, see mine's good, the sides are good. Down here it's just a smidgen, but that's probably how she could have made it. So I'm not worried about lining up there as I'm worried about lining it up here. We're going to tie this with string anyway, so that's not a big deal. So. Yeah, so just give that a moment to dry, and then we'll continue on here. So remember, this is going in the back, not the front over what you just did. So I'm just going to double check it. Now that those are glued together, I need a better table. Yeah, so if I take it off the paper and put it on like a flat tabletop, it stands. So it's just my paper is being, being in the way. So now with the next two pieces, you're going to uh, peel off the adhesive. Now with the adhesive, you want to make sure you're not pressing too hard right from the get-go um, because you really need to make sure that even though you think it's lined up at the top, you want to make sure that anything that's protruding is in sync with the bottom so that it stands properly. So I would place it over top and then I would find a nice flat tabletop part, not on your paper, and make sure that it stands nicely before you press it really tight. So it's because it's not as easy to line up as, um, the back because they're not exactly the same. So I try and find the curve at the top here and center it in between there. And then I've just laid it on top and I'm going to go stand it up. It might stand up here. No, it's not going to. So make sure when you stand it up that it doesn't tilt her in any way. And if it's good, then you can press it into place. So I know mine is fine because see, I'll flip it over. See, as you start to layer, you can see that some parts will stick out more than the other. And so you want to still make sure that this is working with the bottom so that it still stands. So these pieces at the side don't really matter. So it's really making sure that this piece works with the rest. And I'm just going to double check it again. But yes, mine is fine there. So I'm just going to give it a press. So remember, your one with the little spooky, um, little spiky pieces at the top, that is your middle layer. Now the front one, same thing. I'm going to use the top part of the curve as my guide, and I'll gently place it on top, um, and then I'll go test to make that it's sure that it will stand. Okay, so do that, and then gently... Set it on top and then go test it out. 
Yeah, so mine is good. And I'm just going to flip it over. Oops, I might have to test it again. Because I didn't press it in enough. But Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, okay, mine's good. I'm just going to give it a press before I... So when I flip this one over, so you can see now how this piece... Um, is now a factor in making sure that balances. So that's why you definitely need to make sure these pieces are fine. And there's going to be a little bit of heat adhesive left here. Um, but you know what? You're not going to see it. And I mean, if you really want to, you can sit there and try and rub it off. Um, but see there, even on the paper it stands. So that's good there. So once that's done, then um, I see, I don't remember which direction. I'm sure that one was at the top. That one was the middle. I don't know, I'd have to go refine my picture, which is on my phone. Um, anyway, so you can refer back to the picture um, in the box. Um, and yeah, you'll just line them up wherever you would like. And then just put a little bit of glue, even if you want to make yourself a little pencil mark somewhere. Even if you put a pencil mark, you're not going to see it too badly on the stain. It's a little bit more noticeable because I haven't stained it yet. But um then you just put a little bit of glue and then just let it set and uh, then line them up that way. And so then the last little thing you'll do is in your box, you'll have some black baker's twine. I have, so I'm just going to give this a cut and you're just going to take that and you're just going to wrap it around the middle and have your knot in the front and give it a tie and then you can cut off the excess there just like that just like that it kind of gives it its finished look there so all right so i hope you guys enjoyed that and you had fun with the new little paint technique that we learned. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing your guys. I'd love to see what you guys have done. If you added any extra color, um, if you, you know, if you didn't put the glaze on the top or whatever, switch things around, totally fine. So um, yeah, so I will see you guys next month. And uh, thanks guys. Bye.